everyone, Mrs V here, and today we are going to talk more about balancing chemical equations. So let's get into this, it's going to be exciting. Okay, so balancing chemical equations, we've talked about there being a three-step method. The first thing you need to do is predict the products of the reaction, which you do by knowing lots of different types of chemical reaction. Then you write the correct chemical formulae for all reactants and products. And finally, you're gonna balance the equation. And today, this is the step we're going to be looking at, how to balance the chemical equation. So what we're gonna look at is called the elements inventory method. And the elements inventory method is something that you'll eventually do in your head, but for a start, we're gonna draw on paper. So why do we need to balance an equation? Well, the law of conservation of mass says during any physical or chemical change, the total mass of the products remains equal to the total mass of the reactants. Another way you can say that is that matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. But what this really means is all the atoms you start with have to be there at the end. And of course, that also means everything that's there at the end had to be there at the start. So you need exactly the same type of atoms and exactly the same number of each type on both sides of the equation. Okay, so let's, the best way to learn this is to just go through lots and lots of examples. So that's what we're going to do today. So our first example is going to be a classic reaction where we burn magnesium. We're gonna start very simple. So burning magnesium is a combination reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So we know it's the product of the reaction is magnesium oxide. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is write ourselves a word equation. And second step in the process is we're going to write the correct chemical formula for everything in that equation. So magnesium is a metal, so it's just written as its symbol. Oxygen, we need to remember that's a diatomic element, so it's O2. And then magnesium oxide is MgO. Once we have our unbalanced equation, what we need to do is take an element's inventory. So we need to count how many atoms of each type there are on each side of the equation. So on the left here, we've got magnesium, and I can see one of those, and we've got oxygen, and there are two of those. On the right-hand side of the equation, magnesium, there's one, and oxygen, there's one. So we can see this equation is not balanced because we can see that there are, while there are the same number of magnesiums on both sides of the equation, there are different numbers of oxygens. So what we're going to need to do is start to fix this. Now, if we look over here, we see the advice that if you start with oxygen, you're gonna have a bad time. In this case, there's nothing else to do but the oxygen, so we're gonna balance them up. So obviously the oxygen on the right-hand side needs to be multiplied by two. Now, when we multiply, we have to multiply the whole compound 
we can't just put a little foo down there because the formula of magnesium oxide is not MgO2. So you have not allowed to change the subscripts anymore once you've written the correct formulae. So we write two MgO and that's good because now we've got two oxygens. But what we've also got now is two magnesiums. So we do a quick check. Is our inventory balanced? No. We now need to add another magnesium to the left hand side. So again we can't make it Mg2 because that's not the formula of magnesium. We have to put the two out the front of the magnesium and what that's going to do is double up our magnesiums and now we see that our inventory balances. We've got two magnesiums on the left and two magnesiums on the right and two oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. So this equation is now balanced. There's one more thing we can add and that are the is the symbols for the states. So you can go, okay, magnesium is a solid, oxygen is a gas, and magnesium oxide is a solid. Now you have a completely correct and balanced chemical equation. So that's not too difficult, is it? Let's have a look at another one. Let's have a look at the reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid. And what that's going to produce is zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So we're going to start with zinc. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. Zinc chloride is ZnCl2 and hydrogen gas, hydrogen's diatomic, so it's H2. Now, inventory time. We have here zinc and we have hydrogen and we have chlorine. And on the other side, we have zinc and we have hydrogen and we have chlorine. I know the chlorine seemed to come first, but I'm trying to keep them in the same order so I can compare the inventory really easily. So how many zincs on the left? One. How many hydrogens on the left? One. How many chlorines on the left? One. On the right, how many zincs? One. How many hydrogens? Two. And how many chlorines? Two. Now, what we can see very quickly is that over on the right hand side here, we need to double up the H and the Cl. So I'm going to have put a two because that's going to double my hydrogen and also double my chlorine. And just in one step, we have actually got a balanced inventory now. All we need to do is put in the state symbols, zinc is a solid. When things are dissolved in water, we write aqueous. Zinc chloride is also aqueous and hydrogen is a gas. So again, a co complete and correct balanced equation now. We could do, let's look at one that's a little bit trickier to do. Let's look at sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. This actually makes sodium sulfate and water as the products. I'm letting you know for some of the, I'm letting you know at this stage what the products of the reactions are because we're only focusing on that third step. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. And water is H2O. Now this is, going to demonstrate to us why we don't want to start with oxygen because you can see oxygen is all over the place in this equation. Let's do our inventory. We have sodium, we have oxygen, we have hydrogen and we have sulfur. 
and sodium, oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur. So on the left-hand side, we've got one sodium. Oxygens, we've got one in the NaOH, but four in the H2SO4. So altogether, we've got five oxygens. Hydrogens, we've got one in the NaOH and two in the H2SO4. So we've got three hydrogens. Sulfurs, we've got one. On the other side, sodiums, we've got two. Oxygens, we've got four in the Na2SO4 and one in the water. So that's five. Hydrogens, we've got two in the waters. And sulfur, we have one. All right. So our inventory is out of balance, sort of all over the place at this stage. So I'm not going to start with oxygen. And in fact, the second last one you always do is hydrogen. So we're going to do everything that's not oxygen or hydrogen first. So let's sodium. We have one on the left and two on the right. Let's double up our sodiums on the left. Now we've got two sodiums but it's also changed. Now we've got two oxygens plus four oxygens. So now we're on six oxygens here. Hydrogens, we've got two here and two in the H2SO4. Now we're on four hydrogens and we're still just on the one sulfur. Let's have a look how we're going over here. Sodium's balance, sulfur's balance. We've only got oxygen and hydrogen left. So I'm gonna do hydrogen before I do oxygen. So hydrogen, we have four on the left and two on the right, which means I need to double up how much there is on the right. Now I have changed to four hydrogens, but I've also changed my oxygen. So now I've got four in the Na2SO4 and two in the water. So now I've got six oxygens. And now look at that, my inventory balances. So we have a completely balanced chemical equation. All we have to do is put in those state symbols. So here it's pretty easy because sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water, the sulfuric acid is dissolved in water, the sodium sulfate is dissolved in water. Water is not dissolved in water. Water is just a liquid, alpha liquid. All right, some little tips and tricks about balancing equations. Sometimes, you get in this impossible situation where you've got two of one substance on one side of the equation, two of one atom and three of the other. There's no, nothing you can multiply by to turn two into three. All you have to do in that case is whatever is making the count of the atoms odd, you just double it. Okay. And I think the best thing to do from here is just practice, 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 practice. And eventually you'll be balancing equations like a pro. That's all for today. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.